Hi there, I'm Nicholas Casamia, and I'm here with the artistic director of the Illuminato Festival. You've only been at this job since January, correct? That's right. So, you've been living in Toronto? Yep. Are you hating it or loving no, it? No, I love it. It's great. I love it, especially when it gets, you know, sunny and warm. It sort of seems to uh, blossom up, which is great. So, what attracted you to uh, the festival this year? Or the festival, because how long is this position for? Uh, it's, uh, I, I, I have an open-ended contract, so you've got to, you know, you got to have me here for a long time. I, you know, I always wanted to, it was always my dream to become a director of a festival, the artistic director of a festival, to sort of be able to work with artists and put a program together and bring it to an audience. And then, you know, for me, the most interesting moment in theatre is always when the audience comes into the theatre and when they leave the theatre to sort of see their faces, how how uh, they've been transformed by a production and, uh, and, and excitement, maybe also sometimes disappointment, it happens. I was attracted to Illuminato because it really captures this breadth of creative disciplines and I thought that is very unique um, in the international festival landscape. And uh, it, I, always, I also thought it was a good moment to come to Canada and it's a country that, you know, even though I, I do know a little bit, but um, um, not enough and I'm, you know, very excited to explore uh, new artists get to know new people, make new connections, and uh, Canada is a great country. So, okay, so you just brought up this year's festival. So what are some of the highlights of this year's festival? That's such a hard question to ask the artistic director because I would go like, one, two, three, four, five. I mean, I, our entire brochure is the highlight, but I mean, I think some of the obvious highlights are, you know, Einstein on the Beast, the Robert Wilson, Philip Glass, uh, uh, um, um, collaboration which they uh, created in 1976 so and it really is regarded as one of the sort of most important or probably the most important opera in the last uh, 50 years and uh, it's Wilson is uh, a director that is maybe not so well known here but I really can only recommend I, th th this is a very project that's very dear to my heart and if there's one seat empty I count it as a personal failure because I really think it's sort of almost like you know Guernica, what Picasso's Guernica is coming to town, and you you don't you 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 can actually go and see it, and you don't go see it. You miss something, you know, for the rest of your life. Or the Beatles are coming. Your neighbors are like, hey, do you want my tickets for the Beatles? And you're like, no, you know, I'm not feeling so well, or whatever, you know. So it's it, it's really a piece that that um, everyone has to come and see. Another highlight is uh, Robert Lepage, his new work of which I saw sort of the final result of his uh, workshop period in his uh, Ex Machina studios in uh, Quebec City and it's uh, quite a stunning um, um, work. It deals sort of with, uh, with the uh, Iraq war but it actually takes, everything takes place in Las Vegas and sort of shows what influence uh, the war has on the people there and it plays also in this sort of military camp in Nevada where they built little villages, Iraq villages, and showed sort of the American soldiers how to, you know, disarm Iraqi civilians played by, you know, Americans. Um, and, and it's an amazing piece and it has this final scene that really blows you completely away. I mean, it's sort of one of these magical moments in theater that you will never forget and it involves a hurricane. I'm not going to say more. Now, one of the other highlights is, uh, of course, a tribute to uh, you know, well, I guess your boyfriend, or no, fiance? Fiance, yes. Sorry, fiance is sort of spearheading in some way, which is a tribute to the McGarrigal sisters, correct? Or is it specifically to? It's, it's, it is sort of specifically a tribute to uh, Kate McGarrigal and to her music. It's called Love Over and Over, mm -hmm. the songs of Kate McGarrigal, and we're doing it at, Ma at Massey Hall. Um, the family, after she died about two years ago, has sort of started, has done one of these shows in London, and they always sort of engage and ask sort of, you know, a group of, local artists and friends to come and, and interpret some of her, her songs along with the family and everyone and then they did it twice in New York and, uh, and now in Toronto which I'm very excited about which is the first time it's being done in Canada. But I was going to ask you about like uh, the queer con uh, content of Illum Illuminata this year. Well you know I mean Rufus who's obviously you know gay um, is also doing his uh, we were doing the Canadian premiere of his new album which is produced by Mark Ronson, Not So Queer, um, and he calls it sort of his... Um, the queers love him, you know, oh, okay, good, good. House, oh, great. you know, well, yeah, I mean, well, that's, people. Okay, great, okay. Yeah. Um, he's sort of the, um, uh, and he calls it sort of his most male album, or heterosexual album sort of ever. He's doing that on the uh, 10th um, of June um, at the um, at the Festival Hub, so that'll be a free show actually, great. and it's the first time he's going to do... Um, 
that new album um, in Canada. Um, so that's um, something. Um, you know, there's always sort of a queer aspect to the McGarrigals, and uh, there's a beautiful, I mean, there's a beautiful, really, really, really gorgeous, gorgeous uh, dance piece uh, by this uh, company from Israel, the Bacheva Dance Company, mm -hmm. which is really one of the top three sort of companies for modern dance. It was actually founded by Martha Graham, and she was oh. the artistic director for a long time with this Baroness Bacheva, who was a disciple of Martha Graham's in, in in, uh, in, in New York and then wanted to found sort of modern dance in, in, in Israel. And uh, that's a beautiful piece sort of about, you know, just sort of emotional tensions between people and really just the core of the body and the movement. And, uh, and, and, and Ohad Naharin, the artistic director, is an amazing artist and he's developed sort of his own um, movement language, really, that he calls Gaga, the way before well, Lady Gaga stole that name. Um, <laughs> So that's really another, I mean, that, that is, um, you know, another big highlight for me. We're also going to show Brokeback Mountain, which... Um, really? Uh, uh, well, because um, Annie Proulx, who wrote the, the short story of Brokeback yeah. Mountain, she's going to be part of our New Yorker program. We have this partnership with okay. The New Yorker again, yeah. where um, they sort of do like a mini New Yorker festival. And we, I spoke a lot to, to sort of their uh, programming person. And um, so Annie Pruel is going to come for a talk and she's going to give a little, um, on Sunday the 10th as well, and she's going to give a little introduction to, um, um, to the piece. To um, the film. Wow, that's great. Film. Yeah. That's amazing. So I have to ask because um, in the news, you know, as you know, budget cutbacks have happened. And yeah. you, uh, this festival has been hit the hardest of any arts festival. Yeah. How did you guys deal with that? I mean, that's a, it's a pretty big blow. You know, I mean, I, you know, I think we're, we're, you know, obviously we're still dealing with it. And I think, you know, it's, it's really an encouragement also, you know, to go out and find more money, you know, yeah. from other sources. And I, and I always, I always think, you know, for the right ideas and for good ideas, you always find money. Well, thank you. That was awesome. Thank, thank you. you. That was a pleasure. Uh -huh. Same here. All right. There we go.